Crafters, it's time for another Tutorial Tuesday. So it's that time of year again, you know, when summer's ending, you gotta get out of the pool and back into school. So I have to start classes tomorrow, so I thought it would be good if we did a crochet project that was school themed. So we're gonna be making this cute little pencil, isn't it adorable? And this project just uses single crochet and the single crochet decrease stitch, so the stitches themselves aren't too hard. What's also nice is it's easy to customize this guy, because you can just by changing the number of rows you do, you can make them longer or shorter. But it's just a fun project, you know, if you want to like send it with your kid, you know, so they can have a reminder of, you know, their family while they're at school so they don't feel down about starting back to school. Plus, it's really adorable, I think. So let's get into the tutorial. The materials I'm going to be using today, as far as yarn goes, I'm using four different colors, all Red Heart Super Saver yarn. The colors I chose to do are black, this is oatmeal for like the pencil part there, I did shocking pink for the eraser, and then for the body of the pencil I chose gold. But you can obviously customize these colors to be whatever colors you want, I'm just showing you the colors that I use today. And then secondly, I'm using a, a size H hook. This hook is by Boy. I really like this hook. It's a nice tapered hook. And normally with Red Heart, I tend to use larger size hooks. But because we're going to be stuffing this, and we don't want any of the stuffing to come out, I'm going to be using a smaller hook than I normally would, so that way my stitches are a little bit tighter. And then we're going to need some kind of stuffing. When I stuff my projects, I usually use yarn scraps because I save them. And then you'll need things like scissors, tapestry needle, but we'll get to all those in a little bit. So we start from the end with the eraser. So we're going to start in our eraser color. I'm using this shocking pink. And I'm personally not a big fan of the magic circle, and I find that lots of people have a hard time with it. So instead, we're going to be using a different method. That's the basic method to start working in the round. And we're just going to start by making a slip knot and then chain three. And then once I have my chain three, I'm going to work a slip stitch into the very first chain that I worked. And that's going to create this nice little circle here. I'll put a video link up on this side and you can watch it to learn how to work in the round if you're not familiar with it. Once I've got my ring made, I'm going to chain one and then work ten single crochet into the space here. And because I'm not using a magic circle, I'm going to work around this tail end so that way I can pull it tight when I get all the way around. So I'm just going to start by working ten single crochet. You may find that stitch counters will help you. So if you need to use a stitch counter, put a stitch counter in your first stitch if you have a hard time keeping track of which stitch is which. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I've worked 10 single crochet into the ring. And for my next round, before I join it, I'm going to join only in the back loop. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to count back 10 stitches to find my first stitch, or if you use a stitch counter, you'll know which one is your first, but I'm just going to count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is my very first stitch. And normally I would insert my hook here and do a slip stitch underneath both loops, but because I, the next round is going to be worked in the back loops only, I'm going to insert my hook in the back loop and do a slip stitch in just the back loop to join the round. And that's going to help the next row look more even. And also at this point if you want, you can grab this tail here that we worked around and you can cinch it up to pull your base tight. And that will just help tighten your first round. So the next round we're going to start with one chain, and then I'm going to work 10 single crochet all the way around, and I'm going to work in just the back loop. So I'm going to work one single crochet in this very first spot where I had the slip stitch where I worked my join, and then another, my second one in the back loop of the second stitch, and I'm going to do one single crochet in the back loop of the single crochet from the previous row until I have 10. Thank you. 
So now I've worked 10 around. You can see it's kind of gaping here. That's my fault because I worked that stitch a little bit loose. Hopefully yours won't look like that. But you might notice because we worked 10 stitches here and we worked 10 stitches this round, it might be starting to fold back on you like this. And this is what we want to do. Kind of fold it back around. And now we want to join this round. Now normally if we were going to keep working in this color, we would just insert the hook here and do a slip stitch and that would be our join. However, because we're changing color, we're actually going to work our slip stitch in our second color. So because I'm changing color, I'm going to cut a tail, leave it long enough so I can still work with it, and move my shocking pink color out of the way. And then because I'm using gold for the body, I'm going to get my gold color out. So get whatever your second color is and start by making a slip knot in that yarn. I'm going to size this down to be about the size that a loop on my hook will be. And now I'm going to come over here and act as if I'm going to join with the pink. So I'm going to find the first stitch of this round and I'm going to insert my hook underneath both loops of that single crochet. Now normally I would grab this end here, pull through into a slip stitch, but instead I'm going to do the slip stitch with this slip knot. So I'm going to put the slip knot on my hook and pull it through everything that's on my hook. And if you come to the back here, I'm going to take this tail end of the slip knot in the new color and then this loose end of the pink color and I'm going to pull the pink a little bit snug so that way my join is nice and tight. And I'm just going to tie a couple knots right here. The nice thing with this project is because we are going to stuff it, all these tail ends, you don't have to bother about weaving them in. They can just kind of stay inside the project. So now I've changed to my new color, and with the yellow working on the body of the pencil, it's pretty simple. We're just going to work 10 single crochet around, work one single crochet in each stitch. Um, we'll start each round with a chain, and then single crochet in the same spot that you work the slip stitch, and go in each spot around until you have 10 single crochet in your new color. So now that I've done my 10th stitch, I'm going to find the top of the first stitch. This is my first stitch here. I'm going to insert the hook underneath the two loops, and I'm going to work a slip stitch to join. And you want to be careful, if you don't tighten this loop here enough, you're going to end up getting some gapping as you work around. So you may, after you do your slip stitch, if it's still loose, you may want to come back to here, pull this guy really nice and tight before you work the slip stitch. And that will just help snug up your work, so that way, when it's completed, you don't have any um, of your stuffing peeking through the seam here. Okay, so I've worked my first round of my body color of the pencil, which is I'm working in the gold, and I'm going to repeat that same process for five more rows, for five more rounds, until I have a total of six rows of the gold color. So just remember, start with the chain, work ten single crochet evenly around, so that means just put one single crochet in each stitch of the previous round, and then when you get to the end, to join it, you just do a slip stitch in the very first stitch of that round, and then you chain one, single crochet around, and just keep doing this until you have a total of six rows. And of course, pause the video if you need to, and if you're confused at any point in this tutorial, comment below, and I will do my best to answer your questions. So I'm going to finish this step part right now, and you go ahead and finish yours, and then we'll come back once we're done with the gold color. Alright, so I've worked a total of six rows in the gold color, and I forgot to mention this, so maybe you did this. You might have already joined your last row. If you did, that's okay. Just go ahead and undo it, undo the joins, so that way you're in the last stitch of that row, because we want to do the joins with the new color, because it's time to change color again. Woohoo! So now we're going to go to our nice oatmeal color, and we're going to do this change color the same way we did last time. So, if you don't remember, we're going to start by making a slip knot in the new color, just like that, nice and cute. And then we're going to trim the gold color off, leaving just a little bit of a tail. Just snip it there. And it's going to look something kind of like this. So we're going to size this new color, the slip knot, we're going to size it to about the size of the hook. 
take it off the hook though, you don't want it on there yet, and we're going to insert the hook right in the top of the first stitch from our row. And then we're going to grab this nice new color, stick it on the hook, just like that, and pull it through everything. And there we go. Now I've changed color, but it'll be a nice seamless color change. You won't really notice it. And we want to make sure we keep this yellow guy pulled tight enough because we don't want it unraveling. And just to ensure it doesn't unravel, we're going to tie a knot right here. Sorry, my hook keeps rubbing against the table as I do this. Just cinch it up. Like I said, it's really nice because all these talons and knots and things, you don't have to worry about weaving them in. Just tuck them down inside there. And also, I'll also mention... Also, I'll also mention, I can't talk today, guys. I'll also mention that we're going to need to stuff it soon, and that that can be a little tricky, but we're going to do one more round um, before we stuff it. So for our first round in the oatmeal color, we want to start coming narrower, because we're now at the top of the pencil. That would be like the wood part, you know, that gets sharpened. So we're going to decrease a couple times in this round. So we're going to start by chaining one, and we're going to work a single crochet in our first stitch. Remember, we always work the single crochet in the same spot as the join. And then in our next two spots, we're going to work a single crochet decrease. So you insert the hook in the first one, yarn over, pull through one, insert the hook in the next stitch. Also, I'll put a link right up here so you can find out how to do this if you're not familiar with this. I'm going to go through it kind of fast, but go watch that video if you're not sure how to do a decrease in single crochet. So, we're here, we've got it in the second spot, we're going to yarn over, pull through one. So now I've got a loop coming through each of those stitches, and we've got the first loop on our hook, and then yarn over and pull through everything. And that works our first single crochet decrease. Then in the next three spots, we're just going to work one single crochet. And then in our next two spots, we're going to work another decrease, so insert the hook. Also I'll mention when you work the decreases, sometimes I end up, you can see here how it's kind of pulled and stretched out. It's important that you don't leave it pulled and stretched out like that, especially when you're working the decreases, because then you get gaps. There's, you can see this guy here, there's a little bit of gapping there, you can kind of see the stuffing inside. So to avoid that, you want to make sure when you get done with the stitch, you pull this part tight. So, we're going to insert the hook, yarn over, pull through one, insert the hook in the next spot, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through everything on the hook to work our decrease. Then we're going to work a single crochet in the last two spots of the round. One, two, and then join with a slip stitch in the top of our first stitch from the round. And this is going to start to make it taper in, and this is also where I'm going to stuff my project. So if you want, you can use actual, like, stuffing stuff actual like stuffing stuffing stuff if that makes any sense I don't know what I'm saying I personally I have some stuffing I sometimes use that but I always save all my yarn scraps I have this nice ugly bag that I made out of a rectangular granny square attempt so I've got all kinds of scraps and things in here so I'm just gonna pull some of these out and stuff it with this you can always use regular stuffing if you want so I'm gonna stuff this and because we haven't finished the pencil I'll show you this here when we stuff it, we want to stuff it really densely because then we want to still have some stuffing that can kind of fluff up and fill in the tip. So it might get a little goofy to work right now because this is going to be really full. So just stuff it pretty tight. Keep stuffing. But like I said, stuff the bottom part really full so that way then because we're going to crochet that tip part and we want to have enough stuffing in there so that it can come fill in the tip. So it might get a little bulgy looking, a little misshapen, and that's okay. You kind of want it to be like that. So you can see I've got it stuffed so full that it's kind of peeking through. That's because I want to, once we do the top, I'll kind of be able to squish the stuffing around and squish some of the stuffing into the top, and then it won't be stretched so much. So once you've got it stuffed full, remember, you want to make sure you have enough in there so it can come fill up the tip. It's time to finish up our nice pencil. So if you look at the top down, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches um, that you have to work in. So on this next round, we're going to start by chaining one, and then work a single crochet in each of the next spots. Each of the next two spots. Sorry, that wasn't clear, guys. So 
I chained, worked a single crochet here, worked a single crochet here. Now in the next two spots, I'm going to work a single crochet decrease. Single crochet once in each of the next two spots. And two. And then work a single crochet decrease. And again, at this point, if it helps you, use stitch counters. They can really save the day. I'm a little rebel. I like to take ri Actually, I don't like to take risks. Just kidding. Um, but with crochet, I usually don't use stitch counters just because I don't. So if you need to look at the top, you should have six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my first stitch of the round right here. And it's time to change to the black color. So again, I'm not going to work my join yet. I'm going to work my join with the black. So cut this tail end. Move that off to the side. I'm also going to move this out of the way a little bit. And get the black yarn. Or if you want to use gray for the pencil tip, you can. I just chose to use black because that's what I had. I'm going to find my end here. This skein is an absolute mess. So like, no, like we've done the last several times, start with a slip knot, size it down to be about the size of what the hook is, come to your project here, remember to keep this end pulled tight, you don't want this getting really loose or your joint's going to be loose. So keep it pulled tight, we're going to come right in the top here, and I'm going to put the slip knot on here, and I'm going to pull the slip knot through everything on my hook, pull this guy tight again. Tie my two tail ends together. Once more, I'm going to stuff those tail ends down into the pencil. This is why we stuffed it last round instead of this round, because it gets harder to stuff as we get narrower. And now we are on our final round. So we're just going to chain one, and then we're going to work decrease single crochet all the way around. So insert my hook here, pull through one. Insert my hook here in the second stitch, pull through one, and then pull through everything. Work another decrease, single crochet, in the next two spots. And then the last two spots, work a final single crochet decrease. I'm kind of catching the stuffing that's in here. I'm trying to be careful with that. And now I'm going to look, you can look from the top or from the side, if you can find your first stitch from the round. And I'm going to come into the top of it. This is kind of hard to see in the black, I know. Just to kind of catch the beginning of that round on your hook. And then work a slip stitch. And then now that I have done with all my stitching, to fasten it off, I'm going to pull a nice big loop through. Cut the loop. Pull this end out. And tighten this guy. And to help kind of close it off, I'm going to take a nice tapestry needle and I'm going to run the tail end, so you can see the tail end, you can kind of see the three stitches here. One, two, three. I'm going to kind of run my hook, my needle through the top part here. And I'm going to catch the yarn. And I'm going to pull this through. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of tighten off that end, make it more of a tip, and it'll also help fasten the end off. So once I've got that through, I'll have kind of shape it into a tip however you want. You can weave through more if you want to to change how it looks. I think I'm happy with this look. So I'm just going to come down right here. And I'm going to pull my yarn through. But I'm going to leave a loop here. So pull this tail through. This nice loop. Feed the tail end through there. And basically what this is doing is making a nice knot. And then what's more, another great thing about working on a project that you're going to be stuffing is instead of having to weave this in, I'm just going to run my needle into the center of my project and out at another random spot. I'm going to catch this tail on here. And I'm going to pull the tail right into my project. kind of came out there, so I'm going to... Stuff it back in there. And I'm just going to kind of mush it around to work the stuffing up to the top and to the tip. Just kind of get it a nice shape. 
And as I said, the amount you stuff it and how tight or loose you do your stitches will determine if you can see any of the stuffing through there. Um, that might be a reason why you want to use actual stuffing instead of yarn scraps. Personally, I don't really mind being able to see a little bit of, of extra color from the stuffing inside. I kind of like it. And now you have a nice, fun, back-to-school pencil. Another idea is if you want to use buttons to add eyes on here, that'd be kind of cute. Make a little friend for whoever in your life is going back to school, or even if it's just for you and you secretly want a little pencil friend in your backpack. You could easily make this into a keychain. If you were to loop a keychain through the top here, put it on your backpack. Um, just some lots of different ways you can use this, or even if you just want to make it because it's so cute, that's okay too. And so there you go, now you know how to make a cute little crochet pencil guy. I went ahead and added eyes and a face to this one, but here you can see just a pencil, you know, without anything on it. Like I said, this would be super cute to put a key ring through here and clip it onto your backpack, that'd be really cute. Or if you just want a little pencil guy, hang around, or just a pencil just for whatever reason, now you know how to make one. So I hope you guys like this tutorial, and since I put a face on this guy, he needs a name. So, I want you to call, I want you, yes you, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you. He needs a name, so comment below and tell me his name, and once I get a couple name ideas, I'll go ahead and I'll update you guys and let you know what his name is going to be. So make sure you comment. Yes, I'm looking at you. Comment below and tell me. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you share it, that would really help because I'm trying to get my videos out there, so anytime you share or interact with my videos, it really helps me, so it would mean a lot if you would do that. So, so I hope you guys have a great week and have fun getting back to school. Amigurumi, 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 I don't know how you say it, so if you want to comment below and tell me how you say it, let me know. Like, one thing was saying it's Amiguru, Amigurumi, 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 like Amigurumi, or Amigurumi, 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 I don't know.